Welcome back again to the Chasing Tone Podcast. I, of course, am Brian Wampler. Today, back again with Blake Weiland from the Tone Mob Podcast. And today, we talk about a gigantic fiasco that happened with his recent giveaway. We talk about the three new pedals that we released, which would be the Pinnacle Deluxe, the new version, a uh, new version of the Fote Beko, and, of course, the Mini Ego Compressor. We talk about a new fuzz that Blake got uh, just recently, and you'll never guess what it is. Uh, it's, it's a modified pedal. Just listen to the episode. You'll love it. And then lastly, we discuss, do we hear with our eyes too much? So with that, let's get right into the episode. Hi, Brian. Hello, Mr. Wyland. How's it going, man? It's going good. It's going good. Sweet. I'm just sitting here on this lovely morning thinking about how I probably need some more coffee. And, I uh, agree. You know, you know, thinking that uh, today's a good day to make some. You know? <laughs> well, the question that I have for you is, does the day end and why? <laughs> because no, it doesn't. If, it, if indeed it does, then it's a day for coffee, which I have not partaken in yet myself. You know, I had some really good coffee sent to me by uh, – actually, it, a guy does a show on YouTube called – it's called Coffee with James O'Rear. And uh, so he he goes out to all these different coffee places and kind of does – like – well, you're, you're familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk. So he kind of does like almost a wine library type of thing but with coffee. And it's kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah. That so is kind of cool. So he sent me some coffee, that, very good coffee. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Guatemalan coffee. One mm-hmm. of my favorite types of, of bean. So there you go. For for uh, how much I enjoy coffee, I think like I could become a real coffee nerd real easily. Yeah. Um, but I stick to pretty basic stuff. Um, like as basic as it gets. I I, I I'm almost scared to take the plunge because I could see myself getting really into it and annoying my family kind of <laughs> like I do with my gear habit right, um, right be like oh this but look at this blend this is the from the finest roaster south of New Jersey they only made um, five of these coffee beans in the world they were they were ten dollars <laughs> a piece <laughs> I could totally see myself doing that and so I've actually been afraid to like really research coffee because I know because I really like just as I just like normal coffee so what would I think of like boutique coffee? That's Probably exactly what I was thinking. Like it, that may lead you down a road you don't want to go. So basically, like right now, you're you're playing, you know, like I don't know, boss pedals, you know, mm-hmm. and you're not even aware that there's great companies such as Wampler, you know, <laughs> not even aware. I, well, I'm, I'm, or it's it's worse than that. It's like I'm aware, but I know I shouldn't do it. <laughs> That makes no sense. That's like that's like playing playing boss pedals, knowing that there's better pedal. better companies out there that have things you know that you can't get anywhere else, but yet still insisting that you're not going to take a dive into the boutique world and buy the new, you know, uh, fuzz pedal that only ten are made of. You know. Oh, okay. All right. I'll go buy some fancy coffee. I do live in Portland <laughs> after all. I mean, of course I've had like Stumptown and some of the bigger local guys, but there's lots of roasters around that I haven't yet investigated and it would probably behoove my taste buds to do so. <laughs> okay. So let me, let's jump into uh, uh, something that I want, I've been wanting to ask you. Okay. So you just, you know, like last, what was it, last week, two weeks ago, you did this gigantic giveaway on Instagram and the social media, yeah, as, right? Yeah, as of this recording, it ended on, um, uh, it, the winner was announced Tuesday as of this recording, so a few days ago, but yes, yes, it is over. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> so my question was, how did that whole thing go? Like, uh, I heard uh, I heard some rumblings on the internets about how uh, how some things went haywire a little bit. Yeah, the giveaway itself went really smooth. Other than like we <laughs> blew up like the the servers we were using a little bit um, a couple times. They were like. What? Uh, wow, what is all these people? Because they were getting just like thousands and thousands of people, right? especially right at the get-go. Um, 
I think we had uh, we had over thirty two thousand entries, you know, in a two week span. So it went pretty bonkers. Um, and then I selected the winner, and the winner was a uh, a gal named Jennifer, yeah. and she was super super nice, and I'm super glad that she won because she was so uh she was just like the the person you want to win because she really right. just enjoyed and appreciated the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, she even like went out of her way to email like I think you and all the rest of the companies involved, yes, she did. and I've heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just like, I mean, this is the person you want to win. And, of course, this is where the negative side came in. Um, her husband, like, is a gearhead. She plays the guitar, and he's like a gearhead. And and so he has, and she doesn't have any social media. So when I announced the winner, they said, oh, just tag his account over here. Okay, no problem. And so that's what I did. Well, instantly, the army of teenagers was unleashed. And they were like, hey, this guy already has a bunch of gear. You should have given it to somebody who needed it. Like, <laughs> like you should have picked somebody better, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't pick anybody. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this was random. And I just had to go on this, like, on the defense for, like, a day and a half, just, like, combating, you know. Right. Mostly, like, super entitled teenagers, but some of them I was kind of surprised to see that they, you know, despite their comments, uh, when you'd hit their profile, they were indeed actual adults. Right. So that was kind of interesting. Um, it is interesting. It's almost like the I would analogize it to this. So let's say, you know, you're a fairly wealthy person and you buy a lottery ticket and you win the lottery. Does that mean that, that you know, the lottery uh foundation or whatever whatever controls all that stuff should they now say i'm sorry dear sir but you already have too much money we're gonna have to distribute your lottery ticket winnings to your whole town or something right exactly that's not that's not how these things work right and and somebody somebody uh else commented in there uh on the it was it was the winner announcement picture that kind of had the most blowback i should say it didn't really right. try i didn't get very many emails i did get some dms um i just kind of ignored them and deleted them they called up in your dms have... huh they called up in my dms and they were like <laughs> why did you give it to that person they already have gear i'm like first of all uh she says she's not sharing <laughs> with her <laughs> husband <laughs> so she won fair and square and second of all shut up like, well, you didn't win. I'm sorry. I didn't win either. I didn't not, win it. It's not really for you to decide, like, hey, I'm sorry, but you've got too much gear. I can't I can't just I can't just give this to you even though it was a contest and you won. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. That, well, that's no different than like someone else winning a contest and you're like, I just don't like your name. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to somebody else. <laughs> Yeah, it's you're you know what? I I I can't tell for sure, but you look like you smell funny. So I don't want any of this stuff to go to you. I, I knew someone that... in third grade named Damien and your name's Damien. And I didn't like that guy in third grade, so you lose. <laughs> you totally lose. But no, it was it was frustrating because because people acted like like it was a a chosen thing. And 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 there's it was a points based system and most people understood right. this where the more points you have gave you more chances to win some people took that as the more points you have the winner with the most points wins uh that's right. not how we set it up uh because that's silly um the other frustrating thing was some of the 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 negative commenters now people may not know this if they've never ran a online contest before but some of the negative commenters, I recognized their username and matched it up with emails that had cheated. So, hmm. but, and by cheated, I mean entered multiple times with essentially the same email. You, there's ways you can enter your email right. that, that make it look like it's different to most systems, but it actually goes back to the same email account. Mm-hmm. And I was able to catch most of those. So some of the people were like, oh, man, why did they win? It's like, well, you were never going to win because you're a cheater, and I caught most of that. But you don't understand. I tried to win. I should have won. It should have been me. It should have been me. Give it to me. 
I I resisted typing this, but I did I did almost hit or I didn't resist typing it. I resisted posting this. I said, okay, what I'll try to do next year is get every company in the industry together, and we will give away all the gear to everyone ever. <laughs> so whoever enters, free pedal. <laughs> yeah, fr- f- free everything. Everything's free. <sighs> anyway, uh, it was it was. I expected could, some of this. We could do I just that. Didn't expect the volume. We and we could we could do that next giveaway. I mean, I'd have to raise my prices to two thousand dollars a pedal to compensate the following month, but we could do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, m- maybe we'll hit it up. We'll hit it. Well, it'll be free Wampler month. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and <laughs> to everyone who you know might want to purchase something, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to ask you for more money because yeah, you know, yeah, we, we gotta pay the bills. So yeah, we gotta support free Wampler month. So <laughs> we're just gonna need you to pony up and pay for the rest of everyone else. I guess it's I almost could... a bigger com- commentary on government strategy, I... isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not true. go there. Right, right. So speaking of uh, speaking of cool things, I know you. Uh, you know we're kind of we're talking about cool things. I mean, we're talking about giving stuff away. That's cool, right? So I thought it was cool. <laughs> Most people thought it was cool. I should I should say that the. The positive comments outweighed the negative, but still, right. the just the volume of negative was right. surprising. I knew we'd get some. I just didn't expect the volume. Right. So. so, so speaking of of those types of things, we uh, we had something that happened recently as well. That uh, you know, it mm-hmm. it's something that we've been working towards a long time for, and mm-hmm. uh, it finally happened. It finally just happened. Tell me more. Well. I don't know if you remember that time that we showed like a mini ego compressor at like NAM and then like another NAM and then finally we're like, it's here. <laughs> it's only taken us 12 months to bring it out, you know? Yes. So yes. We, we finally did release that mini ego compressor. And people can buy it? And it is available. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's small. It's a compressor. It's okay. blue. <laughs> And it's blue. It, 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 and, uh, you know, basically, you know, we had like the regular ego compressor, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, we took, let's see, so we kept the knob still our volume, of course, blend and sustain. Mm-hmm. And we put the tone control on a switch, so like on off, brightness on off. And then, um, the attack is on a switch, so slow and fast. Gotcha. So that's available. And then we released uh, two new version twos. So we have like the faux tape echo, uh, like the super duper deluxe deluxe version with subdivisions, mm-hmm. uh, and top mounted jacks, of course, and re- true bi- complete bypass instead of true bypass. This is complete bypass. Complete bypass. It's yes. Like- it's so bypassed that I mean, you literally cannot bypass any harder than right. this bypass. Right. Right. It's more. It's more true bypass than true bypass. Whoa. Yeah. That's like more human than human. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. we're using there's special type of relay. You can't find them only. We had them special made. Um, of course. So they're they're complete bypass. You know, using complete relays. bypass mm-hmm. relays here at Wampler Technologies. Yep. Only only get them here. And um, also, we released the uh, new version of the Pinnacle Deluxe. It looks so pretty. So yeah, it's it's something I've been messing with for a little bit. So we brought like a three band EQ on it, and mm-hmm. uh, I added an additional. So there's a couple of different game boosts. We still have like there's the old game boost style, which uh, it used to be on the stomp. That moved back to the toggle switch, like the standard Pinnacle. Okay. And then, and that kind of like restructures the gain stages and stuff a bit. So, mm-hmm. and not only uh, it, it that switch gives you additional gain, but it also gives you uh, like a little more. Hmm, how would you put this? A little bit more feel, if that makes sense. Okay. So it's yeah, it's, feel, it's uh, maybe feel <laughs> it's like a little bit more. I don't, it's, it's not really sag, I don't think. It's just like when you hit the note, you feel it give a little bit more whenever you hit that switch. Yeah. And then the yeah, other, so the, so now on the stop switch is like a, a different overdrive, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a tube screamer ish type of thing. But 
it has a knob to compensate like that turns the volume and the gain up at the same time and, and so what you can do is you can set that down low and it like changes if you put them turn them both on it actually makes everything much tighter so it's a much tighter overdrive gotcha. or distortion gotcha. sound and mm -hmm. you can turn that up and you know get a lot more gain as well it's like running a tube screamer into you know stacking that with anything else and then lastly, there is a sag switch on it. So what that does is like if you're using a, a hot humbuckers or anything like that, you can actually press that switch and it takes the sag away. Oh, it gets rid of it. Gets okay. rid of it. Okay, interesting. And, it, and basically what it's doing is it's, it, once again, it's tightening up that front end. Mm -hmm. so. Gotcha. so yeah, so we did that and then um, kind of a, uh, I don't know. I, we did, you know, like all new paint and um, everything moved to uh, relay bypass, except for the mini pedals. So everything is now like the soft switches with relay, mm -hmm. you know, I, I said relay bypass. It's true bypass using relays. I've trademarked. Complete bypass. Yeah, get, get complete right. bypass. That mm -hmm. trademark Wampler 2016. Um, and uh, yeah, so like it's just. All this stuff that uh, I've been wanting to do for a long time finally came to fruition. So it's cool. It's cool That's... to see uh, see things happen like that. Rather than, you know, we had some pedals that had like the mechanical switches, and some had relay bypass or you know relays and soft switches. Some had top down mount. Excuse me, top mounted jacks. Some had side mounted. So you know, it's all standardized now. It all looks beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, some yeah, of the graphics, I mean, got, you, a lot of the graphics got updated. I was going to say you touched on the paint, but yeah, you also did a lot yep. of graphic work. Yeah. Jason, I imagine was, was, was working very hard on all that yeah. for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Jason Wilding. So it's, it's been a, a, he and I were going back and forth where he'd do something and, I was, and I'd be like, eh, I'm not really into that. And he'd grumble and, you know, cuss at me a little <laughs> bit and <laughs> he's like, Dude, what do you expect from me? And I'm like, it's got to be perfect, man. It's just got to be perfect. <laughs> but, Come on, man. <laughs> Get it together, you old Brit. Get it together. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, no, it came together. They yeah. all look, they all look, you know, um, more cohesive now across yes. the line. It and, looked, yeah, and exactly. It's like you see it, and it's like, oh, there's a Wampler, and it, uh, and it, and it looks good. It's a good look. So well, thank you. it was a good a good move to to put. I think that people sometimes underestimate how important the graphics and look of a pedal actually are. Um, they are. I mean, for us, it's branding. You know, so if you see if you see it on a pedal board, then you know what it is. You know, even if mm -hmm. you don't know what it is. Exactly, and yeah. and it's people and. Whether you, I mean, whether most, this is, this is most, uh, gearhead slash guitar players. If something looks terrible, even if it sounds amazing, you may not ever like get the urge to plug it in and find out that it sounds amazing. Right. So, I mean, spending the time to get the look right is, is pretty important because while the audience never sees it, you are staring at it. <laughs> For the entire practice session or set or recording, you're looking, you see the pedal. And if you're looking at this big, stupid looking thing that you don't want to see, I think it is part of the inspiration. Um, I think the whole so. package. I, I mean, I, th I think a lot of people, and you know, you touched on it too, and I hate to say it, but a lot of people hear with their eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot where they're like, this pedal sounds amazing. And you could take the that same exact circuit. Put into a box that had a whole different graphic, and the person may or may not like it as much. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. I seen on a on a similar, different but similar idea, a, a gag where um, they were talking to this girl out on the street, and they were like, oh, are you so excited about the new iPhone? And, uh, and she was like, oh, yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to try it. And so they... <laughs> They were like, hey, well, just a second. We'll give you a second, and we'll we'll upload all of your information from your phone into the new iPhone and let you play with it for a second, and then um, you can give us your feedback. And she, they took it kind of behind her back, and then the one guy was distracting her with more questions about what she was excited about, et cetera. 
they just like stuck her phone in a different case and handed it back to her. Really? And they were like, yeah, they were like, so what do you think? And she was like scrolling through. She's like, oh, it seems faster and smoother and, and just overall better. And it's like her exact same phone. Right. And I'm not saying that she's stupid. I'm saying that that's how us humans kind of tend to be. Like we I would do. probably fall mm-hmm. for that. Well, well so. if you're expecting a change, if you're expecting it to be better, then you're you're probably going to see it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of people that talk about their dumbbell pedal, and it's like it's it's a Zen drive or it's a you know it's tube screamer. You know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And not that not that those circuits can't be changed drastically, but um, still, at the end of the day, it's like. All right. Well, I mean, I hope I'm glad you like that Zen drive, you know, with <laughs> with fancy <laughs> graphics and different knobs, you know. But mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, this is so much better than the Zen drive, and you're like, uh, I hate to tell you there, friend, but like, it's pretty much it's the same thing, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, hey, I like a Zen drive, but yeah, to to call it, yeah, I don't know. It's all subjective, yeah, as but, we know. I mean. It, I mean, I, I don't. There's other companies like, for example, the I think it's the Dumbloid. Uh, that's based around a tube screamer circuitry, but it's so drastically changed. It's so different from like a TS808 now, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's still kind of based around that loosely ish. So, mm-hmm. um, so you know that, and it sounds good. It's got um, some funky clipping things going on. That's kind of hard to explain, but. Uh, so it's it's just uh, it's a creative approach to taking a tube screamer circuit and making it dumbbell-esque, I guess. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was I was always kind of disappointed when someone came out with a dumbbell pedal and it like it was just a Zen drive. You know, well, I'm like, come I on, am. man! I mean, Alf and Sean are they're already doing that, dude. You know, <laughs> right, right. So. Um, yeah, that's true. That it is kind of a bummer when when it's a direct thing like that. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, at least change the paint. Speaking man. of, yes. Yeah, spe- yeah. Speaking of uh, the paint scheme. Speaking of new stuff that that has came out, tell me what mm-hmm. you're working on. I know, I know oh, you got something yeah. cooking. I I know. I almost kind of glossed over that. I was gonna go off of deep end and come, you know, talk, start talking placebo effect and all kinds of other things, but we, <laughs> we won't can... go there. <laughs> yeah, like the placebo effect of buying, you know, high end gear. Wait a minute, you're turking me. Wait a second, <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, uh, or directional cables, don't plug them in backwards, kids. The, it'll change your tone. Uh, Especially oh with a buffer on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. That's, like, um, a, that's actually, like a whole different podcast episode. We could, t- we could talk is. about, actually we could probably even demo that, where take all these high-end cables and, you know, put a buffer up front and see how much they don't change. Oh my gosh. Oh, speaking of cable demos, I'm sorry. Sure. You may have not, you guys, you've been really busy, but you may not have experienced the insanity that was in 60 cycle hum here a couple weeks ago. You know, I, I actually caught something briefly of that, but I didn't, I didn't see it. <laughs> oh. I just heard everyone talking about the insanity that came from, I guess a cable company got really pissy with the, uh, Ryan from 60 Cycle, right? Oh, man. that Yeah, there's a cable company, and I'm not involved, so I can rip. Like, it doesn't matter. A uh, cable company called Audio Envy, um, who make a lot of what I uh, what I believe to be snake oil claims about their, their cable. They claim it's directional, and it's a it, it's a two-lead design and all really this stuff. Now, I'm, I'm no engineer, but I've talked to engineers, and uh, I, I don't buy it. Um, I think it's based on their review. It was a well-made cable um, that would, you know, probably serve you for years. But as far as being directional and and changing your tone and all this stuff, nah. But I'm anyway, the guy not familiar with they it. basically they basically uh, demoed it by plugging it into an amp and various amps and different setups. That's kind of how they they tested it and they tested it with mm-hmm. some other cables and that's probably how and, I would do it. Know. I mean, if it's a guitar cable, you know. Exactly. Well, apparently that's no, no, Brian, you're wrong. You wouldn't. Why would you ever test a guitar cable in a setup like that? How no. how else no, are you no, supposed no, no. to test it? I don't get it. Well, you're supposed to test it in a controlled studio environment, and going direct in 
and measuring the frequencies, the frequency uh, changes for each one, or something like that. Like he was basically into a, claiming direct into like the console, at the studio. That's yeah, or a nice preamp or something. It was the, I don't even remember the details, but basically he was suggesting that the way you really hear a difference with his cable is by using it in a way that most musicians would never use it. And these are guitar cables and not speaker cables or anything like that, They're right? instrument cables. Yeah, they're instrument cables. Ooh, so, okay. guitar being one of the most plugged-in instruments, I would say they are guitar cables. <laughs> I've, I've, never, I've never heard of testing a guitar cable like that. Um, yeah, and he did but, this kind of A-B I mean, thing. I where at, I mean, so it gets weirder, though, because he did this weird A-B thing at the end where he was like, Ryan and Steve's test wasn't any good, and so here's my <laughs> demo. And yeah, you can kind of hear some differences. Um, not enough to like make me want to go buy his cable because the guy just has a horrible attitude. He's he's got this elitist thing going on, but, and then he's hold on. I gotta pause you right there. So let's. Okay. I, I need to make this clear for legal reasons that this is Blake Wyland's <laughs> opinion. <laughs> That's right. And I have opinions, and Blake, I can give them. <laughs> Blake from the Tone Mob Company. Just, just so we're all clear. <laughs> Continue on. This, this may not, may or may not be reflective of Wampler Pedals' uh, opinions <laughs> or sights in any way, shape, or form. Oh, he'll what? probably try to sue you what? now just what? because I'm on your show. Wampler Pedals um, takes no responsibility, either expressed or implied, in any way. <laughs> uh. No, and neither does Tomob LLC. This is just Blake Wyland as a person giving his opinion. Gotcha. <laughs> and I should preface this with, I've never actually played this cable in real life. I'm just, and I probably never will, because the guy is just a loon. He, <laughs> he, hey, that's, he, <laughs> ma- he, <laughs> that's, that's almost as good as like, okay, I'm not meaning to be a jerk here. But I'm gonna be a jerk. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, like, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not one to pass judgment. But the guy's a loon. Isn't that he what is. You just said? <laughs> yes. No, that's not exactly what I said. I said I've never played his cable, and I probably never will because he's a loon. Okay. Okay. So, so I, I, <laughs> yes. I take what you said back totally. <laughs> I am just being a jerk. Um, <laughs> no, he just he. I, I'm sorry. I got I got really upset about it because he started threatening legal action against Ryan and Steve based on what was largely a positive review. I'm gonna guess that's I, the thing. I guess you could sue a podcast for the money they made off that podcast. Like, all right, here's a quarter. <laughs> he just he that was the thing. Like his his product is probably just fine. I I don't know. Uh, but I, I've never the review was largely yeah the the review was largely positive. It was just like. This is well constructed. It does the job. Um, I can't hear as big of a difference, you know, in this setting. Um, but it is, you know, it's a nice cable. That was essentially the nutshell version of the review. And he was just, he was like, no, you guys are dumb. And I'm going to sue you if you don't take Ryan's comments out of the podcast and all the, all this stuff. It was just, it was ridiculous. Um, I guess maybe not suing per se, but he threatened legal action is what should be said. And it was just... I don't know what you would get. Was, well, they don't have anything to give you. Right. I mean, it's, not like, I mean. it's not like, you know, they're doing a service for free, you know? I mean, they might have a little advertising here and there, but you and I both yeah. know that <laughs> there's like these guitar gear podcasts, we don't have a million, fo- you know, a million listeners that, you know, it's a pretty small audience. Yeah, in so, comparison to, you know, Mark Marin or somebody. Right, right, uh-huh. yeah. So, I yeah, mean, so the, it know, was just advertising it, it was isn't raking in the box. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it was I don't know, it just left a really bad taste in my mouth the way he, the way he was conducting himself as a just as a person. I but, mean, his his product could be fine. I don't But know. but some political figures say that, you know, uh there's no such thing as bad publicity. So, you and know, that's true. I'm pretty sure I, he sold some cables based on this whole drama. Yeah. So I, maybe so. Go. I don't know. I, I prefer not to, you know, mark it that way, but that's just me. And that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> you prefer not yeah. to be a raging jerk? Okay. That's noted. Uh, that's probably <laughs> a good thing. If I had a dime for every time that I threatened, uh, you know, lawsuit over someone putting out a bad review of my pedal. 
Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I just look at things different, I guess. You know, I mean, some people like it, some people don't, and it's an opinion based review. I, I would rather that than like, you know, the normal reviews that you see in places, uh, especially people that have, uh, uh, you know, are making money from it. Mm -hmm. They can be skewed a little bit, you know, and they're going to be skewed a little bit. So I don't right, know. you tend it's, to like it's I, the business model. Yeah, I mean, I think if, I think the most true reviews, and I'm looking at products like even like outside the gear industry or anything. Just when I'm rev when I'm looking for a, a real review, I'm looking for a review from the average guy at home who's using the product, and um, you know he's given his honest opinion. Like so, mm -hmm. for like example, for an example, if I'm looking for a new lens for my camera. I'm not. Pro I'm probably not going to go to the guy that you know. Canon's been throwing him a bunch of lenses, you know, it, because he's not. He's not going to give. He's not going to be like, well, it's a great lens, except that this part really sucked, you know. <laughs> it's like this is terrible. <laughs> he's gonna. He's not going to talk about that stuff that much, you know. But the the average guy that you know bought this camera and bought the lens and is like, all right, well, I'm going to do a review on YouTube. Like he's probably. I don't know. He doesn't. He doesn't have any incentive he, to not give his yeah. honest opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I don't know. I kind of anyway. look at that stuff with a, with a bit of a grain of salt, I guess. I take a bit yes. of a grain of salt. Yep. So. Anyway. Anyway. So well, I, I was going to talk yeah. about the cool thing. <laughs> yeah. So tell tell me about. So I'm I'm just going to spill the beans. I know you got a, a new pedal coming out, or I know there's a new pedal that you're involved with somehow, coming out, right? Yes, that is true. This episode will be dropping on Monday, correct? Uh, yes. maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see how fast it gets uploaded. I don't know. It won't be done any sooner than Monday. It won't be done Let's any put, sooner than Monday, right. Yeah, so this may have already happened, or it may be happening right now as you're listening. <laughs> Who knows? Stop. Um, Pause this podcast and go to <laughs> Blake's website. <laughs> Yes, so uh, I teamed up with uh, Christian over at Adventure Audio, and we, well, he had the uh, the initial brainstorm, and I thought it was a great idea, um, because I watch Stranger Things, and I love Stranger Things, and so he came out with a Stranger Things-themed fuzz pedal. Uh, it's called the, the Demogorgon, and there's only 11 of them available, so anybody that's watched the show will get all of that uh all of that reference they looked really so, cool um this may be yeah. really dumb but what mm -hmm. is the stranger things what is that what is that yeah you've never, never seen it no never heard of it no end of story no uh, uh it was like probably one of the most successful tv shows that netflix ever put out um it just netflix it puts out, out tv uh, shows you <laughs> What's it like to have the time to watch Netflix there, Mr. White? Are you yanking my chain right now? <laughs> I really have never heard of that. Uh, no, yes, Netflix puts out television programs, and one of them they put out was called Stranger Things, and it was like this real throwback um, to like Stephen King, kind of Steven Spielberg, 80s sci-fi slash horror movies, um, and people freaked out about it, myself included. I watched the whole season twice. Uh, really? It was. So yeah, it's kind it of a thing. Really... It's like, it's like the Lost version. Uh, you know, the the show Lost of 2016. Mm -hmm. That's really what you're pretty saying, much. Right? Yeah, exactly. It it just was a really big deal, uh, and everybody, for the most part, everybody really loved it. And so we're like, you know, Christian and I are both kind of sci-fi nerds. So, I mean, he has like a, you know, he's got a a, a, a pedal called the Fuzz Peaks. Uh, which is obviously a Twin Peaks reference, and it says, I want to believe on it, just like the X-Files. So, like, we're, huh. this this couldn't be coming from a better place. Gotcha. Um, but anyway, uh, that's coming out. If it's if today's Halloween and you're listening to it, it's out today, and uh, there's not very many of them. So, so t Tell me about it. Like, what what's it based off of? What what transistors is it using? Is it gooped? Are you, what it's kind gooped. Of what I don't kind, know what's in it. No. What kind of resistors are you using? Are you measuring each one? 
What's a resistor? <laughs> Just totally teasing you. I, I say that because uh, I, actually, no, it's, uh, I had a question like that this week, and I'm like, no, we don't measure every resistor. <laughs> measure every resistor? <laughs> Just buy ones that are within a close tolerance, how about, and call it a day. No, if it oh, says okay. 10K, yeah. it's supposed to be 10K. <laughs> or else it's not boutique. Oh, jeez. Wow, that's insane. Um, I get some crazy ones. <laughs> I get some crazy ones. Do people even realize what that would entail and how much that would make a pedal cost? <laughs> the, the argument was that it's not boutique unless... Um, you know, we're doing something like that. Like we should, in other words, we shouldn't, you know, our pedal should not be $200 unless like we're going to that length. So, uh, and I really didn't have time to explain to him like how business worked <laughs> and margins no. and retailers and no, you know, we, we don't and no, making in America how it's, you know, it's much more expensive. <laughs> it just is. There's no getting around it. Oh man. Some, you know? some people's kids. It's probably the same guy. It's who probably the same people wondered. that were responding to you on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's uh, anyway. But yes, that's coming out today. There, uh, uh, today if it's Halloween, it's coming out on Halloween, and uh, we got a little video put together for it. Don't anticipate them being around very long. Mm -hmm. They come in the the cool little uh, tone mob wood box with the you know the lid that also functions as a as a uh, pedal riser if you so desire. Hmm. So, yeah. It's kind of a cool little treat uh, just because we're nerds and we like fuzz. So there you go. That sounds pretty cool. So where, and where's, what's the link to check it out? Uh, the link to check it out will be just go to ToneMob.com. It'll be the first thing you see there. So actually, ToneMob.com slash store. That'll be more direct. ToneMob.com slash oh, store. You got fancy and got a store now. Oh, I got a store. I had a store for a while, Brian. Come on, man. Well, I just I guess that's I where I don't... resell all the pedals you send me. I was gonna say I, maybe that's all the pedals I send you for reviews, right? Yes, they're... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's like, man, look at all this. Hey, guys, I got this new Pinnacle Deluxe in here. It's uh, you know, <laughs> here it is. Check it out. Uh, <laughs> I measured every resistor myself. So <laughs> that's awesome. All right, very good. Anyway, so you got you got new fuzz dropping. Uh, mm -hmm. to probably today if you're listening to this. Uh, unless you've listened, like you're going uh, on October 31st. Okay, we'll call it that. Exactly. So maybe they're listening um, in November. Yes. They're like, but now I missed it. I'm sorry. You missed it. I'm, like, I'm sorry. If you're on the mailing list, you you definitely would have seen it if you open your email. Definitely. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. So we got that. Uh, make sure you check out our three newest pedals at WamplerPedals.com. That would be the Pinnacle Deluxe version two super or as i call it the pinnacle super duper duper deluxe deluxe version <laughs> um the new faux tape echo version two which again faux tape echo super duper deluxe deluxe version and then the yes. mini ego compressor uh all at wamplepedals.com so make sure Bam. everyone checks it out please check it out do yourself a favor and check it out already all right so until next week blake uh we'll talk later Thanks again for listening to the Chasing Tone podcast. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to leave a review, I'd appreciate that as well. Just go to iTunes or wherever you download your podcast and leave a review there. Uh, iTunes especially really helps me. I appreciate that. If you have any comments or questions, you can email podcast at wamplerpedals.com, info at tonemob.com if you want to reach Blake. You can also just check us out on Facebook as well. And uh, while you're on Facebook, if you happen to like Facebook, make sure you check out the Wampler Pedals Tone Group there, where it's a big group of us who just love to talk about gear. Get on there and talk about gear. So, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.